So this video is in response to some comments and questions I received about how to export our 3D designs from Onshape uh, to STL files that can then be used by our 3D printers. So first, uh, let's take a look at this flow diagram that kind of describes how this process works. So on the left here, typically, your 3D model would be created in some uh, 3D CAD software. Uh, in our case, it's going to be on shape. And then the idea is that we want to export the design to an STL file, .stl. Um, and an STL file, I'm not going to get into it, but it's, it's a basically a bunch of triangles. So your model is converted into this whole crazy map of triangles. And then you want to take that STL file and, you know, when you have a 3D printer, you're always going to have a software that interfaces with that 3D printer. So in my case, um, I use the Lulzbot Mini. So, so the interfacing software for that is uh, Cura. But so you want to take that STL file and then import it into your 3D printer software. And then inside that software is, is where you set all the print settings the layer heights and all that stuff. And, and uh, we're not going to get into that. We're just going to kind of focus on how to get the file out of Onshape. So kind of the most important thing in exporting two STL files and then subsequently importing um, the STL files is getting your units correct. So just remember that the most important thing are your units. The units that you're exporting in need to match the units that your 3D printer software uses to import the models. So since most of the time 3D printer software uses millimeters to import STL files, it's best practice to just always export your models in millimeters, which usually is default anyway. So in a minute, as I demonstrate, we will get to how to select the units, but that's just kind of the most important thing to remember. If you get your units off and they're mismatched between the export and the import process, you're going to get scaling issues. And when it comes into the 3D printer software, the part might look really, really small or it might look really, really big. So again, check your units and then just run a sanity check and make sure that the scale on your imported model in your 3D printer software is correct. And then one more note on this is that the units you model in on shape, so whether you use millimeters, inches, centimeters, feet, yards, whatever units you use inside on shape doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're exporting the model in the correct units. And then another thing before we get into this is that it is very difficult to edit STL files. So basically don't count on it. Um, it's difficult and very few programs actually make it possible. So get in the habit of saving your design files in case you do want to make some changes to your prints, because if you only save your STL files and then you end up wanting to make a change to it, it's going to be very difficult or probably impossible to do, and you'll have to recreate the file. So again, just always save your original design files. Okay, so let's get into Onshape. Um, here we have a design. This is a, a webcam mount. So here we have a part studio um, with um, parts of a webcam mount. And then also I have it in my assembly, kind of the full assembly with the arm. And so what are the steps to getting uh, these parts exported to SDL files? So the export command can actually be accessed in many, many places. Uh, so for example, in my parts studio, I can, um, I have, I have a multi part part studio here. So, you know, I can right click on any of the parts and, and select export. I'm going to cancel. Um, we'll come back to this. I can also right click on the part in the workspace and select export. 
I can click on multiple parts and select export. I can also right click on the whole part studio and select export. And then I can also come to the assembly, uh, right click on the assembly, select export, you can right click on parts in the workspace and select export. And then I can also right click on On, on the assembly in the feature tree um, and different parts in the feature tree and export. So as you can see, there are many ways you can access the export command. So, you know, that's good. Onshape makes it easy for us, but there are some distinctions. So the general idea is that, let's go back to the part studio. The general idea is that you can export a single part or you can export groups of parts. So let's start with a single part. So let's say I wanna export this, this arm, okay? So I'm gonna right click and click on export. And so here I can give my exported file a, a, a name. So we can just name it arm and then a format. So you can actually export to a bunch of different file formats, but you know, this video is about STLs. Then I wouldn't change the SCL format, uh, just keep it on binary. Units, so this is this is the important part. Since most 3D printer interface software, like um, Cura, Slicer, all that, since they import by default in millimeter units, you always wanna have, or generally want to have millimeter selected. This is gonna save you lots of headaches and frustration. So just keep units set to millimeters. So even if you're modeling in inches um, or some other units in on shape, when you export to STL, make sure millimeter is selected. Then for resolution, just keep fine selected. And then it gives you some options. So do you wanna download the STL file or do you wanna download it and store it in a new tab? or just store it in a new tab. So typically you'll just wanna download it and then press okay. And then here you see that um, my browser is downloading the file and then we can show it in the folder and there it is arm.stl. And now we can take this file and bring it into our 3D printing software. Okay, so that was easy. That was um, exporting single parts. Now, if you select multiple parts, or if you, if you try to export a whole part studio, or if you try to export an assembly, but for demo, demo let's just export uh, a full part studio. Everything is the same except this checkbox here at the bottom. And it's basically, so it's saying export unique parts as individual files. So what does that mean? So by default, it's checked. And if I do this, so if I keep it checked, what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna get an STL file, a different STL file for each of these parts. So I should get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should get eight STL files um, if I export this, okay? So I press okay. And then look, I have a zip file. So it's downloading my zip file, show in folder. And so there's my zip file. And if I double click on it, I see that I indeed have <clears throat> eight items. Okay, so that worked. Now what about if I right click export the whole part studio with all these parts in it, and then I instead try to uncheck this checkbox. So now what it's gonna do, it's gonna treat this whole part studio as one part. So it's gonna kind of combine all these parts into one STL file. So let's, let's give that a try. And we can just rename this part studio one one file, just so we have it for reference. Press okay. 
and there you have it. Um, it's not a zip file. Let's see what it what it is. Show in folder. And there it is. Part Studio One, one file. So now if I uh, went and opened up this file in my 3D printer software, you know, I would get one entity uh, instead of the individual files that uh, you can also get with the other method. So which one to use? Well, if you just finished modeling one part and you want to print it, you just want to export that one part. But if you have a lot of parts to export, you know, you can just select all the parts right click export and then you probably want to keep them separate because you want to print them separately so then you would click on this checkbox um, name it appropriately you know make sure millimeters selected press ok and then you're going to get a zip file of in this case three individual parts and then of course if you want to actually access these files in the zip file you know you can just extract all and tell your computer where to extract it and there you are you have your part studio with your individual files all right hope you found that helpful if you have questions make sure to leave a comment below and see you next time <laughs>